I'm often asked, what are the most common mistakes made at year end? Well, this video will address those mistakes and the best solution to these issues. Many can actually torpedo your entire year end efforts. Stay tuned to see if you're making any of these errors. Year end can be a stressful time and stress breaks focus and concentration and lack of concentration leads to mistakes. Some mistakes come from too little knowledge or understanding of what works and what doesn't. Whatever the reason, some mistakes are easy to fix while others can torpedo your entire year end efforts if left unfixed. I'm glad to be able to share some of those common mistakes so you'll be mindful to not make them yourself. Let's get started. Mistake number one, not preparing enough in advance for a year-end campaign. Oftentimes, we aren't given adequate lead time to start and complete a project. However, at year-end, you're given plenty of time to begin preparing for your year-end campaign. The issue is whether you decide to take advantage of that lead time. The organization that does the best with its year-end campaign starts early, usually in late September or early October. Unfortunately, too many organizations wait until middle of November or even just after Thanksgiving to think about year-end letter, call, or visits. Letters finally get written and sent out by mid-December or in some cases, the last week of December. In the scheme of things, this is better than not having any year-end strategy, but not much better. All current studies show that most owners are preparing for year-end by September or October. This means they start to funnel their first gifts the first week of November and are done by Thanksgiving. Some will still be giving by the first week of December, but truly a significant majority is done by mid-December. If you're just getting out your letter at that time, you're at a significant disadvantage of catching people with little or no money left. Mistake number two. Sending a generic letter or no letter at all at your end. It's a proven fact that the most successful year end strategy includes a letter followed up by a phone call or visit. Yes, the old fashioned snail mail letter. Some organizations have shifted to email appeals, but every study I've seen shows that the baby boomers, still the largest giving block, respond best to hard copy letters over emails. Email marketing is becoming more and more popular. That's why organization is slowly introducing both throughout the year to capture those who are interested in one over the other. But those who get the importance of a hard copy letter still make one critical mistake at year end. They send the same letter with a dear friend salutation and the same giving range to all donors on their list. Treating everyone the same may sound noble on one hand, but it's illogical on another. People with significant wealth, often referred by me as the critical few, the 20% that bring in 80% of your income, are used to personalized attention and service, and it makes a difference in their giving. They respond best to a personal salutation and rise to the occasion by giving more with a higher giving range of options in the letter. Small donors would respond better to a personalized letter, but most organizations don't have the capacity to send a personalized letter to everyone on their mailing list. So at least sending to the critical few makes sense. Mistake number three, not calling or visiting a donor after sending a letter. All studies show that an average letter at year end yields two to three percent response rate with an exceptional letter returning four to six percent. When a call is made, that response soars to 25 to 30 percent. Add a visit and the response rate jumps even further to 50 percent. So why don't all organizations call or visit after a letter? A tactical error. In a word, fear. A letter is non-threatening. Someone doesn't respond and no one knows it. There's no awkward conversation, no pregnant pause to wait for a response after an ask, and definitely no confrontation. Most nonprofit leaders won't admit it, but they are scared to take the initiative to ask. At best, they aren't trained. They will use the excuse that they got busy and other things were a priority, but my experience is that when pressed for an answer, it revolves around fear of asking. Since it's critical to the success of your year-end strategy to follow up the phone call, my recommendation is to find someone, staff or board member, who isn't afraid to ask and have them make follow-up calls. Watch my video on how to make a terrific year-end call to find out what to say. 
My other recommendation, and I suggest this for any time of the year, is to get training on how to ask. Building confidence will help you overcome fear. I've got a few videos in the major donor playlist that will help with training to make a great appeal. Mistake number four, asking for money to get out of the red. One of the biggest mistakes nonprofits make is asking for money to reduce debt or get out of debt. It's proven that donors don't want to give to a sinking ship. Giving to reduce or eliminate debt sends the signal that the organization is having financial problems. Even if this is just a temporary setback, donors don't know or understand that and it makes them skittish to give. Donors want to give to exciting projects or programs that are focused on the future. The old adage goes like this, your past lends you credibility, but people give to the future. Even if you're in debt, continue to direct people to future plans, programs, and projects. Donors are motivated by cutting edge, forward thinking organizations. Find other ways to eliminate your debt through board members or close friends of the organization who understand that you need to eliminate your debt to move forward. Mistake number five, not being specific in your appeal. Donors who understand your mission, vision, and values and trust the leadership of the organization may give to things that are undesignated where most needed, but even those people will only give so much to broad causes. It's proven that donors like to give and give more to a project or program that is very specific in nature. They like to see a business plan, or in this case, an organizational plan, that shows how something will be accomplished and how much money is needed. They don't need to know down to the pencil and paperclip, but they do want to know how many staff members are needed, how much food, supplies, products are needed, and they want to know the expected or anticipated results. Think of donors as investors or shareholders, and they are buying into your organization with their gift. To most, it's an investment, and they want to see a return on that investment. In your case, the return has changed lives. They want to know the world was made a better place one person at a time due to their gift, that one or more lives were impacted for the better. That said, remember that many donors think logically. They need plans and details, but ultimately they give emotionally. In most households, there is at least one logical giver and one emotional giver. Don't focus on one or the other or you'll lose big and alienate one. Find a project or program that details what is being accomplished with specifics for the logical giver and make sure there's examples of real people and change lives for the emotional givers. The logical givers tend to be a tougher nut to crack since they need more specifics. Be sure to include overall specifics in how a program or project will unfold, but be sure to ask specifically as well. Don't make the mistake of saying, give whatever you can give or give whatever you're led to give. Most donors want to meet expectations, but they need to know those expectations. They need to know you want them to think or pray about a gift of $1,000. If you don't give them an amount, you may end up with $10, and that really won't fulfill your expectations. This comes from lessons learned after unmet expectations and disappointments. There are many more mistakes, but those are for another video. If you like this format and found it helpful and want more, please list that in the comment section below. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button and give a comment below if there was something you especially liked. I'll be releasing more year-end videos between now and December 31st. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell when you want to see the next video. And remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Instagram, go to at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, or you can always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income, even your income, and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.